Okay, so we have a little gap here today, just a little field wall. Um, we're going to take it down to where that is there, across here. We're going to try to tie it back in there, but there is a chance we might have to take it back in there as well, um, just down to there. Um, but we'll do our best. This is just a sort of a wall for livestock, so it doesn't have to be uh, the prettiest. It just needs to be nice and strong. Um, and if we can do this section, the um, guy that owns the land would prefer us just to do that and not touch that if we can. So we'll see how that goes. Just a quick tip for anyone doing a bit of gapping. So I'm finding a lot of stone in this wall is laid, traced. Now you can get away with odd one, but there's a lot of them in this. So what you need to make sure is you're going to have enough stone to put the wall back right. Because if I lay all this in, you know, length in, we're going to be short that way. But luckily for me, if you see there, there's more stone. But it's just something to think about um, to make sure you're not going to start a job and then run out. Now it's it's not always perfect. You can't always get it on. You know, sometimes you have to you have to put some trace stones in but not this many. So just, just something to think about and make sure you, uh, you're you prepared for something like that happening. All right, so this is what I'm down to now. I'm gonna have to start using the pickaxe and the uh, shovels and stuff now. But this is what I'm looking for when I've stripped a wall out. So I've got a good section to tie into here. Um, well, as good as you're gonna get. You've got a through stone there, through stone there. So if anything collapses in the future, hopefully it'll stop on there and go that way. And if you look here, you can see, I need to take that to stone and that out. There's a through stone there. Um, although it is on the slant, we are gonna be able to build off that. And there's another one there that we can tie into again. If anything goes, I mean, they might lose a tiny bit of our wall, but we're talking, you know, a foot or so. Um, I mean, obviously to make this wall perfect, you'd take it all down, do it again. It's just not realistic. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get the pickaxe and stuff. Um, dig this all out here. What's that? Oh, there's a shotgun around there. There you go. That's how rural we are. Okay, so that's pretty much dug out now. Um, I appear to have found a culvert or a little stream. Can you see water coming in there? If you can see it, it's all coming in here. So. What I've found is, if you look down the line, the culvert's actually in front of the, where the wall will be. The water's coming in here, and it's actually exiting there. So everything's sort of this side of the wall. So what we're gonna do to resolve this, is I'm gonna find a stone that I can stick in here to keep a bit of a water away. And I'm gonna fill this back in with fill. I'm gonna dig this out here, and then I'm gonna run sort of like a, a fairly flat stone across. So it'll be on there and on there and it'll keep this little passageway open for water to run. I've still got something firm to build on for water. Okay, so that is the footings in now. So we are nice and sturdy all the way up. Can walk on them, you know. Get there. Oh, that needs pinning a bit more. But that's the reality of walling. Um, these are all sturdy. Sturdy. I still have to do that bit. Sort that out because this piece is okay. But what I'm going to do now is we are going to build a pillar up to half height here and to there, and then we're going to fill that section through. So I do it like this because that wall there, as you can see, is wonky. This one is wonky. If I wall to them, it's going to be wrong. You can use the metal sort of stakes. I don't use them for field walling. Totally personal preference, but for me, I'm just going to build two walls up to the uh, two pillars up to the height where the throughs are, and wall that middle section through. So that's what you're going to see now. Right, we're just going to lift a, uh, a through stone on here, um, and that should get us a level through there. So when I'm putting these throughs on. They're not level and the courses are not level just because it's rough stone and it's a field wall so it's just not necessary but what is necessary is strength so what I want to do is get this up to the wall here right 
And then what I like to do is get something like that, rock it to one side, rock it up onto it, and then just put it onto the wall like so. Then you're not just having to muscle it over, yeah? So what I'm gonna do now is put that over the wall there like that. There we are. And then we've got a nice batter down there, touching at the back. Um, and then we'll have to uh, sort of underfill this here and, and pin it because you can see it's all wobbly, can't you? What I want it to do is touch, there you go, like that. So it's touching now. Well, you can wobble it that way, but you can't wobble it that way. So what I'll do is fill it up and pin it at this side and that's nice and sturdy then to build off. section built up now you can see there's one two oh you can't see because my jump's on it but there's three through stones in that section what i've done now is i've put my uh, top line on here because here it's 1.1 high at the base of the tops but there it's only 900 high so obviously i need to uh, get an exact height it's higher at this end to that end um so what i'm going to do now is the same process again so I'm going to build it up to the next course of throughs, which will be about here. Um, and I'll do that in two places and then run it through. Um, so each time I'm bringing it in um, and then eventually I want to get to the top. I've measured the top. We can go, uh, we can go as wide as 15, but I think I'm going to do it at 14. Um, we'll see how we end up. But that means we had a, a, a 27 base, probably a bit over that right at the bottom of the footing. And then we're going to about 14, 15 top. So halfway up, it wants to be halfway in between them two figures. Uh, not done any math right now, but I will figure it out and put it in the comments um, or on the screen now. Okay, so you can see now we've got four panels up, one at each side. And I just want to say something about as well. So this here, if you can see that stone there, that would look like a running joint. Well, technically it would be a running joint because on the face of the wall there's a running joint here, but if you look, the depth of this actually well covers this through stone. So it's still really structurally sound. Um, or, you know, ideally you'd get one running all the way across, but um, if you're doing something really decorative and nice, you might have a route around for something, but that's gone on there fine. And that's gonna be really sturdy. So don't worry about in field walling, don't worry about if you get one on top of other sometimes like that. As long as it's sturdy, you know, you don't want to be doing it in decorative work, you know, but for stuff like this, in my opinion, that's perfectly acceptable. Right, we have finished that section in now. So that's walled in. Next job, I'm gonna build a pillar up to height now. Um, if you're doing it yourself, you, you can build, you know, another lift and then uh, another pillar. But I'm going to um, just put another little course on there, the next lot of throughs, and then I'll build it up to height on top of that. Also, I do want to go over some other rules if you're walling. You know, um, obviously you want your biggest stones to the bottom. So as we can see here, they're slowly grading up. Now, sometimes if you're doing random, you can put some bigger stuff further up, but try and keep it at least halfway, that's it. Um, most of your joints want to be covered as well, so you see this, I know we've already mentioned about the running joint on the other side, um, but you know, you want to cover it, you want good coverage like that there, you know, it's passable for what we're doing here, but that would be classed as like a zip joint. Um, it's, it's plenty strong for what we're doing, but you know, um, if you're doing something a bit more decorative, you don't want loads of them in. Um, and yeah, so you want your through stones, which are, where are my throughs? There, that one, I think, and then that one up there. So you want them about knee height from base at footings. You know, you can't, some people do it bit knee height from ground, but I do it from footings. And then I do my second course of throughs, if it's having them, probably just around waist height, something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at for now. And then we will, uh, we'll do the next bit after that.
Okay, we've finished that middle section now. Um, so what we're going to do now is, you see how I've put my lines on there, um, there and there. So what we're going to do now is tie into this section. So what we're aiming to do is get as straight as we can at the bottom and at least halfway up. And then all we're going to do is run it as straight as we can, but then sort of um, kink it off into where the old wall is. And then we're going to do the same here. So I'm going to do you a little step-by-step -step bit for this. Um, and then the next one I'll just... Um, I'll just wall it in and you can watch the uh, time lapse of that. But yeah, that's us there. We've got throughs there, there. I'm putting one there, but I will put one like um, in when we're building that up there. So yeah, there we are. Right, so first job this morning. After we've got this through on, we're going to build a pillar up to the line on this side of this wall here to keep that straight. And then if you can see how the line bends off then, and that's how we'll tie it into this section. So that'll be straight all the way to this through, and then we'll just kink it off slightly into these, uh, and then wall that through as it is. Okay, that's the walling finished off. Um, see, it's all tied in as neat as we can with that. Uh, and the same at the other end. We've got the nice follow-on of throughs coming through the top here. We've got plenty of throughs in it at the bottom. And it's nice and strong. So what we're going to do now is you put a pin in at either end. And then what you want to do is get your top line for your tops as close to that as you can. Obviously, these are already made, so they're just going on as is. But if you're making them yourself, you try and get them just to just touch that line all the way up um, also if you're walling uphill like I am start at the bottom not at the top if you start at the top your stones always sort of try and lean over and sometimes fall over and it's the right thing to do so start at the bottom wall uphill and uh, I'll do a time lapse of that now Yeah, there we are, all uh, finished off. As you can see, like in there, there's a little gap. So I've just put a bit of fill in there, make sure it's wedged in nicely. Um, so yeah, this this video should sort of help some of you, you know, beginners out um, on what you need to be doing. If you're gapping, this is my way of doing it. You know, there's probably loads of ways of doing it, but this way is fairly efficient. That's um, 6.8 square meters, uh, including new fillings. That culvert fixing, that's two and three quarter days. Um, I have had to obviously bring stone up and stuff like that. Um, so just to give you an idea of time scale. Um, you know, sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it's quicker, but you know, it's just a rough guide. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, if you could subscribe, that'd be great. Uh, on to the next one.